Will you join me just for a moment of silence? Let's get intentional about what brings us together tonight, please. As a very special guest joins us. I hope I am as good as him. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Kit Miller and I have the privilege of serving as the director of the MK Gandhi Institute for Nonviolence. Today kicks off the first in a series of events that we'll be doing here in Rochester to celebrate and remember Gandhi's 150th birthday. These events are taking place around the country and around the world. It's hard to overestimate the importance of Gandhi's legacy at this time in our lives. Between his wise words about sustainability as our brothers and sisters in the Bahamas struggle with the latest superstorm or when we as we deal with the legacy of violence so today as we remember September 11 2001 we're also going to be remembering an earlier September 11th that took place in 1906 more about that in just a moment I want to thank the India Community Center for their enormous support for this series. I want to thank Veterans for Peace and Colgate Rochester Crozier Divinity School who helped us get the word out about this event. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Reverend James Schwartz from Veterans for Peace for a few words. Thank you, Kip. Uh, and thank you for the invitation for us to speak on this occasion. On behalf of Veterans for Peace and all of those who seek peaceful solutions to problems from global peace to personal peace, we thank you for initiating this event today. As Kim was pointing out, 113 years ago today, Mahatma Gandhi performed the first act of nonviolence against the imperialistic British apartheid policies in South Africa. Gandhi had worked to reconcile Hindu and Muslim residents of South Af Africa to the religious differences to teach brotherhood and commonality to work against the subhuman conditions people of color were subjected to in South Africa. As Gandhi started his campaign of nonviolence, he couldn't have imagined that this same day, September 11th, 1906, would 85 years later produce one of the greatest acts of violence perpetuated by religious zealots striking at the heart of another country using religious overtones for their justification. Violence begets violence. It is our role to revert back to Gandhi's lesson of nonviolence to affect social and political change. We are here literally in the shadows of a memorial to, a tra to the tragic violence on the world stage. We stand here on the same day our nation mourns the violence committed on this day 18 years ago. True memorialization of this particular date, 9-11, would be the further memorialized nonviolent and nonviolent resistance that Gandhi, that century ago, eventually brought change to South Africa and later monumental change to his native country of India. As Gandhi wrote in 1942, 
What difference does it make to the dead, the orphans, the homeless, whether the mad destruction is wrought under the name of totalitarianism or the holy name of liberty and democracy? Or democracy, excuse me. And yet the world today is in a crisis with war and climate change, green death and destruction to millions of people, millions of innocent children, women and men, young and old, Christian, Jew, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, atheist, agnostics, people of all religions. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter your religious beliefs. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. We are all part of the human community. <clears throat> now is the time for the world to listen and learn one of the major points that Gandhi made in response to the charge of sedition against him in 1922. Nonviolence is the first article of my faith. It is also the last article of my creed. We pray that that would be the faith, article of faith and creed for all humankind today and forever. Thank you for being here. Amen. We've got a couple more speakers, and we're going to be quick because we want to get this on the 6 o'clock news tonight. So I'm so happy to welcome one of our community partners from the India Community Center, Mr. Vinod Luthra. Thank you very much, Kate. Uh, I must say, James Watts, excellent job done. I think I learned a little bit more about Gandhi than what I read before, and also very pleased to see what you've done. Uh, firstly, I want to thank everyone who has come over here. Uh, we have been trying to get this Walk for Peace part of Gandhi's celebration, 150th anniversary. The question is, why to celebrate 150th anniversary? It basically what James Watt said is to remember the Gandhi principle, which was basically peace, love, nonviolence, and truth. That what he preached. And for some of you who may not know, Gandhi was the father of the nation for India and able to win the freedom. But the question really comes back, why we are celebrating here after 150th year, number of things are happening. One, I mentioned Gandhi principle, Second, also to know we are very fortunate to have Gandhi Institute for Nonviolence located in Rochester. And uh, we are very fortunate to have it. And Kit, where is Kit? She, she has done a great job in moving this thing forward, and you'll have a chance to see it. In addition, as you go along, as you see right now, as you folks are going to walk. While you're walking, think about the Gandhi principles. Think about how you can utilize in your own personal life. Because it starts with everyone. We are living in a world right now, every day the violence is expanding. You see the gun violence. You may not know that, or you may know. We have about 40,000 people being killed in U.S. alone because of the violence. We need to adopt nonviolence, which is almost 100 people per day. Likewise, if you look at worldwide, of course the TV makes the thing come into your living room. There are 40 hot spots in the world where the violence is going on today. One being the Syria, within a matter of the last eight years, Syria alone, with a population of 20 million only, about 4 million people got refugee and half a million people got killed. So tell me what is happening in this world. So today as we walk, remember Gandhi, remember what he stand, stood for and how he helped India 
continent to gain freedom from the tyranny of British Empire. So thank you again folks coming in today and this function today is just a start. Over the next 60 to 90 days you will see a lot of Gandhi's function being done along with Gandhi Institute and India Community Center uh, with our chair, uh, chair of India. Hi, Josna. And also by the Hindu temple, I see on the other side. Hi. So I think we are really as a community, and some of the you know, know that we are about roughly 5,000 to 10,000, depending on how you count, of people of Indian origin in this greater Rochester area. And each and every one of you, I request, I pray and request you very humbly that make sure you are able to participate in some function. And I must, must thank Ashwin Shah. Where is Ashwin? He is the guy who really is pushing it. And this is one of the really Gandhi principles he has been doing solely, single-handedly. He moves the thing today and really appreciate. While I'm here, I need to recognize a couple of people here. I got Bill here from Brighton. I appreciate you coming over, Bill. He's a town supervisor. And we also have Jeremy, uh, who tried to hopefully run again next year, my friend. Uh, he ran for the senator for the our New York State. Anybody else I didn't recognize? Yeah, Robin Will. Oh, Robin Will. Robin is here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And you said, please. Welcome all of you to uh, the Gandhi Institute for Nonviolence. Will you put your hand up in the air if this is your first time visiting? Welcome. We love little visitors. What's your name? Mia. Mia. Thank you for being here tonight, Mia. So we. Did anyone walk through a part of the city that was new to them? Please raise your hand. Right. Wonderful. And did anybody have an opportunity to learn and talk to someone that you didn't know yet about nonviolent social change? Please raise your hand. This is wonderful. Thank you so very much. We're going to be, uh, I'm not going to take much time here. I want to introduce you to a very esteemed human being in this place um, and he is going to speak to you about the, the
the movement that we've just made today from walking away from violence. <laughs> walking away from violence, we're walking towards nonviolence. So we walked away today symbolically from September 11, 2001, and we walked today symbolically towards September 11, 1906. And all around the world, very few people would be as privileged to have this person as we have to tell us a little bit more about that significant day in world history on September 11th, 1906. Please, please help me to welcome Arun Gandhi. Thank you, Kit. It was a very uh, nice introduction. I don't know that I deserve it, but uh, I'm very happy that all of you participated in this event. It's the first event in the uh, celebration of the 150th anniversary, and I hope that all the events are as successful as this one is. Sub September 11th, 1906 was the day sanity was born. And my grandfather nurtured that sanity and transformed it into a philosophy of life, a philosophy of nonviolence. He was quite disturbed by what he saw in the world, not just the political oppression and, and exploitation, but he realized that we human beings have built societies of exploitation that we are continuously exploiting each other and exploiting nature and exploiting everything just to amass wealth and power. And he felt that that was not what society, human civilized society should be. And so the philosophy of nonviolence was born and he showed us how it can be effectively used Although he was at that time concerned only about the independence of India and so everybody got the impression that his philosophy of nonviolence is just about political conflict resolution. But it is not, not that at all. It's much more than that. It's about personal transformation and about looking at our own selves and, and realizing our own weaknesses and transforming those weaknesses into strengths. And real practice of nonviolence begins with each one of us. And that is why he made that very pertinent comment that we have to be the change that we wish to see in the world. If we don't change our habits and ourselves and our attitudes, we will never be able to change uh, society. So while September 11th, 1906 was the day sanity was born, September 11th, 2001 was the day sanity was killed destroyed. Because that was the day we were all responsible for it. We were provoked into an action which we could have avoided, but we all participated in that action and we increased violence and increased all the uh, um, hate and prejudice that we see multiplying every day today. And unfortunately, we now have uh, a leadership that uh, fosters this kind of hate and prejudice. And we are going away from what grandfather envisioned a civilized society to be. So it is time for us to stop and reflect on where are we going and what are we doing and what is what are we what kind of a world are we going to leave to little children who come behind us and i don't think that we are showing them a good example and we are certainly not going to leave a very healthy world for them to live in we are already seeing the 
decadence and the decay of the world uh, in many respects, not only in the uh, human uh, interactions, but also uh, the way we have exploited nature and, and what nature is uh, doing to us today. So there is still time for us to change this and, and uh, uh, make a difference in this world. And, and that is the power that nonviolence gives to each one of us, that we can become the change and we can, through changing ourselves, we can change uh, the, the whole world. One of the things that uh, Bapuji uh, I call uh, Gandhiji Bapuji, as all the Indians here would know. Uh, but uh, Bapuji, one of the things that he held very strongly in his mind was that we should at least not exploit people on religious basis. That religion is not about hating people Religion is about loving people. I remember he used to tell us when we were growing up, I'm glad you love your mommy. <laughs> he, he used to say that religion is like climbing a mountain. We are all ultimately going to the same peak, so why should it matter to anybody which side of the mountain we choose to climb up from? So if we have that understanding and if we respect all the people and all the different religions and learn to live together as one big human family, we will bring so much peace and understanding in this world. So one of the things I have spoken about and I have also tried to impress upon uh, everybody who has been helping in the uh, uh, in the programs for the 150th anniversary is that at least in this 150th year let us pledge to create that kind of harmony between people because peace is not the absence of war. Peace is creating harmony in the people. And the only way we can create that harmony in people is by coming together and holding a common prayer on an open field like this, where Hindus, Muslims, Christians, uh, Buddhists, any of the religious uh, groups can all come together and we pray uh, in each other's prayers. That is the kind of prayer my grandfather used to pray every morning and evening, every day of his life. And that's the prayers I grew up with. We always sat in an ro open room without any religious symbols, and we prayed all the prayers, Christian prayers and Muslim prayers and Hindu prayers. And that is how we were made to learn, we are to respect all the different religions and all the different faiths uh, that exist in this world there. And we can do that, and I've suggested that we um, have an interfaith prayer service. I think it is part of the program on one of the days, uh, and I hope that all of you will come back there and encourage more people to come to that interfaith uh, prayer service, because that is the only way we can break down the walls that we have built between people and uh, learn to reach out and, and uh, extend our hand of friendship. So uh, let's pledge in this 150th year that we will work for uh, his dream of a world of peace and harmony. Thank you again for all of you participating in this event. And let's make it a successful one.
As Arun said, we have many events coming up, and uh, my colleague Bianca, will you stick your hand up in the air? Over there, there, she's at a table with a list of all the different events coming up. There is a there is an interfaith prayer service that will take place downtown in Martin Luther King Park on Gandhi's birthday on October 2nd. Please come. We want all the faith traditions of the world to be together and as many people as possible. We have workshops coming up to talk about hate. We have workshops to talk about how to talk to one another. We have a beautiful play about Arun's grandmother who's, you know, so often women are overlooked when we talk about history. Arun and his wife wrote a beautiful book about her. So there's going to be a, a play about her, Jagadamba, that will be taking place at the India Community Center. We have so many things coming up. We really tried to make something for everybody. And then finally, on October 15th, Arun will join us again. Uh, at the Dryden Theater when there's going to be a screening, 13th, thank you, for a screening of the film Gandhi. Um, and of course, you could, we can have a preview of that film with this, <laughs> this wonderful person here. Um, please help me. I think don't don't we all know how important it is to thank people. So just if if just for a moment, one I um, my colleagues here we work so hard. Um, so on top of all the school work and other work that we're doing right now, we're we're doing things for the Gandhi 150th birthday. So uh, I have colleagues all around, and I just want would you join me in appreciating them because they work so hard here. If you see someone with one of these shirts on, just be sure to just go up and say thank you for your service. Um, I want to express enormous gratitude to Jeremy Cooney, who has been such a um, uh, friend and supporter of this event. Jeremy, thank you so much. And Ashwin uh, Shah, who came here months ago and just said we have to do things for this in this community for Gandhi's 150th birthday and many of you know Ashwin and you know you can't say no to that man right <laughs> which is a wonderful thing so Ashwin please please uh, accept enormous appreciation <laughs> we have several groups here who use the strategies that we were learning and talking about on the way they're using that right now to make our community better. So that's Abby at the Rochester People's Climate Coalition. There's a lot of climate action taking place. So please go talk to Abby. She's a director. Uh, two wonderful young women who have spent time at the Gandhi Institute, Maya and Audrey, who are with Moms Demand Action for Gun Control. And I just forgot your names. Tell me. Yeah. Ian yeah. And, and Andy yeah. and where, where are you guys and Mia and where are you guys from again uh, Rochester Rapid Response Network Rochester Rapid Response Network to support immigrants in this community wow thank you thank you all for being here so please go and talk to them and find out ways that you can be supportive to them and thank you again uh, to Veterans for Peace and Rochester Crozier Oh my God, I'm going to miss it up. Clogate Rochester Crozier Divinity School. I can say the acronym and not the name. Um, thank you all so much. Thank you for all the partnership. And Ashwin's going to get the last word. I, I, I need only 10 seconds because anytime when we have a vote of thanks by somebody as important as Kit, we don't get a chance to thank her. And then Kit has put in an enormous effort. So thank you, Kit.